Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Gateway Church Cymru Online. My name is Luke Morgan, and I'm the pastor of Gateway Church, and I want to give you a warm welcome today. Thank you for joining us on this weekend as we worship Jesus together. And if it's your first time here, then we're so glad that you're with us today. You know, at Gateway, we're a church that believes anybody can be changed by the love and the grace of Jesus. And I pray today you will experience his love for you. Well, today we've got a great service for you. We're going to be worshipping the Lord together. We're going to be taking communion. We've also got some activities and a story for all the children who are watching online as well this morning. And today we are beginning a brand new sermon series, which I'm so excited about. So maybe we could begin our time together by praying and calling upon God. And wherever you're watching this from, let's just invite God to come and speak to us today that we might know his presence within our lives. And maybe you're watching this and you've got needs at this moment in time. Well, I want to encourage you, just lay them before the Lord this morning, whether it's sickness or family situations or financial situations, whatever it might be, know this morning that God is able to meet your needs. So wherever you're watching this from, let's pray together and let's call upon God. Amen. Lord, we thank you that this is the day that you have made. Lord, we will rejoice. We will be glad in it. Lord, we thank you that we belong to you today. We thank you for this relationship that we have with you. We thank you, Lord, that all that we need is found in you. Lord, that you are the way maker, the miracle worker, the promise keeper. God, that is who you are. And we thank you that we belong to you today. We thank you for your goodness and your love. And Lord Jesus, I just pray you will speak to us this morning. Lord, even wherever we're watching this from, I pray you will just meet people in their homes, Lord, or whether they're out on the walk, may they know your presence today. Lord, bring answers to prayer today. And Lord, I just ask that you will be glorified in everything that is said and done. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, let's worship together.
Lord Jesus, we just want to honour you today. It is you that we want to praise, Lord, for all that you have done in our lives. Lord, we thank you for the blessings of God that you have poured out within our lives. Lord, we thank you for your provision and your protection. And Lord, we thank you most importantly for your presence within our lives. We thank you that we know you and have this relationship with you. And Jesus, I just pray today, Lord, for all who are watching online, that Lord, we'd all know your presence, even in our homes this morning, that we know that you are here with us, Lord. Lord, we just thank you. We worship you. We honour you today. Amen. Amen. Well, I'd like to thank Ellen and Sam for leading us in worship and leading us in that incredible song which has recently been released. You know, I know that it's blessed so many people and I pray you've been encouraged by the worship this morning as we give thanks to Jesus. Amen. Well, right now we've got a special treat for all the children who are watching online. We've got a story from two very special visitors and then we've got some activities as well. So I do hope you enjoy this. Are we nearly finished your maths, Dolly? Yes, one more question, Ted, and then I'm finished. Oh, good. I'm finished colouring your picture. Yes, Neely. I'm going to give this one to my mother at home time. Oh, I'm sure that looked great on your kitchen wall. I'm absolutely starving. Can't wait for lunchtime. Me too. Should I show you my new lunchbox? Oh, yes. What a lovely colour blue. I wonder what your mother packed for you today. Hey Dolly, where's your lunchbox? <laughs> oh no, I forgot to pick up my box from the kitchen table. Oh, don't worry Dolly, I've got plenty to share with you. Oh, thanks Ted, you're the best. That's what friends are for Dolly. Would you like me to tell you a story about how a little boy shared his lunch? Yo, yes Ted, I'd love to hear. It was getting late. A big crowd of people had listened to Jesus all day. Now everyone was tired and hungry. There's nothing here for them to eat, said Jesus, Jesus' special friends. They were out in the hills in a lonely place. They must go to the farms and villages and buy something there. You give them something to eat, said Jesus. We couldn't buy for all these people. It would cost far too much. Philip said there was five more than five thousand people there ask if they have any bread said jesus so jesus's special friends went all around the great big crowd have you got any bread have you got any bread but they all shook their heads except for one small boy he had five bread rolls and two small fish to eat for his dinner andrew took him to jesus here's the boy with five bread rolls and two small fish but they won't go far enough among these people. The little boy was very hungry. He looked down at his dinner. Then he looked up at Jesus. Without words, he held out five bread rolls and two small fish for Jesus to take. Jesus smiled at him and the little boy felt so happy he had done the right thing. Jesus always said to thank God for his food. So now he thanked God for the little boy's dinner. After that, he shared it with all the people. First the bread, then the fish. The little boy couldn't believe his eyes. Every one of those people got to share. Not just a crumb, but plenty of dinner for all of them. Not just enough, but lots left over. Jesus' special friends filled 12 baskets with leftovers. Everyone needs bread to eat, Jesus says. But you need even more of me.
Well, I want to thank Lee, Will and Grace Davis for sending in those videos to us today. I do hope that all the children enjoyed that story and that activity as well. And I hope the parents and the grandparents watching as well, I hope you enjoyed that. And it was so great to see Sutty and Sweep as well. So thank you, Lee, Will and Grace for doing that this morning. Well, right now we are going to begin our brand new sermon series together. And this is something that I'm so excited about. And I pray that it will bring encouragement to you today. Real Freedom. That's the name of this brand new sermon series which we are beginning today and we're going to continue through over these next couple of weeks here on Gateway Church Cymru online. And I'm so excited about this series which God has laid on my heart. Now last Friday here in Wales, our Welsh Government announced that we are going to be on lockdown for another three weeks. It seems like a lifetime since we've been on lockdown, but we're going to be on lockdown for another three weeks due to the coronavirus. And then on Sunday evening last week, the Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, he outlined the plan of how we in the UK are going to be coming out of lockdown and how the restrictions are going to be eased. But, you know, I think it's fair to say this morning, it's going to take quite some time. You know, I think we're going to be online only as a church for another couple of weeks yet. You know, it's going to take quite some time for us to get out of lockdown and for there to be any sort of resemblance of normal. And, you know, I'm sure you'd agree with me this morning that this is quite frustrating. I'm sure you've been frustrated. I'm, I've been frustrated over these last couple of weeks. You know, over these last couple of months, it's been very difficult just being stuck in and only being allowed to go out just to do a bit of shopping and one bit of exercise a day. You know, it's been, it's been hard over these last couple of weeks. And I'm sure you found it hard as well, being unable to see loved ones. And, and maybe some of you have been unable to go out as well because of your health condi conditions and, and other things like that. You know, it's been difficult over these last few months being forced to stay home, being forced to, to not go out. You know, it's almost like our freedom has been taken away from us. And it's been very, very difficult. You know, as I said, we've been restricted from seeing loved ones, from shopping, from exercising, from socializing, from being with friends and family, from traveling to different places. You know, I can't wait to, to be able just to go for a drive on a Saturday and go out to, to for food somewhere. You know, I'm looking forward to that. But it's been difficult being restricted. You know, even from going to work, you know, I'm sure many of you are dying to go back to work as well, which is something I'm sure you never thought that you would say. You know, we've even been restricted in, in coming together to worship in our churches and, you know, and coming to seek God together. And in truth, these last couple of weeks and these last couple of months, it's felt like prison, hasn't it? I'm sure this is what prison feels like. And everybody now is longing for freedom again. Everybody who I speak to, everybody on social media and online, everybody is just dying for that day when we're able to, to be free again and when the lockdown is over and we can go back to, to normal. And I'm hoping that it won't be much longer as well, just like many of you are. You know, I, I'm sure though that even when when lockdown is over, I'm sure that that day when the government say that, that it's over, that we're allowed to go back to normal, I know that there will still be many people who feel like they're in a prison. There'll be many people who feel like they're still bound, even though we're allowed to go back to normal and we can go wherever we want and see whoever we want. There'll still be many people who feel like they're in a prison. And maybe you're watching this today and maybe it's something that you felt a long, long time. And even long before coronavirus happened, you felt like you're in a prison. Maybe not a physical prison, but there's another prison as well. The prison that's going on inside our lives. Maybe you feel bound by something and, and you're watching this today and, and you know what I'm talking about. Maybe it's the prison of sin. Maybe you've been stuck in the prison of shame for many, many years. Maybe it's the prison of guilt or the prison of fear. Maybe it's the prison of addiction or the prison of pain. You know, maybe you're watching this this morning and you're a Christian then I want to remind you this morning that if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, that God's word tells us that we have been delivered from slavery, that we're no longer, no longer bound or slaves to sin. We've been set free by Jesus Christ. It's all through what Jesus has done, through his death on the cross, through his resurrection. We are free because he has made that way possible. And when Jesus died on the cross, when he rose again, and when we placed our faith and our trust in him, then he traded that darkness and that despair and that prison 
And now we are in a place of victory, of freedom and in, of strength as well. You know, the Bible tells us that when we surrender our lives to Jesus, that the old is gone and that the new has come. The Bible says that we are a new creation in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. But even though that is true, I know that there are many people and many Christians who are watching who are still bound at this time. You know, maybe the, that bondage and that, that addiction or that situation, that pain, that feeling of guilt and shame, maybe that is still calling your name, even though you've surrendered your life to Jesus. You know, I'm sure you'd agree with me this morning that it's difficult. You know, even when we surrender our lives to Jesus, you know, the Bible says that it is now a process that's taken place in our lives, that we are being changed from glory to glory. The Bible calls this word sanctification, but we are being changed. But I'm sure you'd agree that it's, it's a difficult journey. You know, I'm sure many of you watching, you know, you've experienced that times where you felt like going back to your old life. There's old habits that you found difficult to get rid of. Those harmful thoughts that you keep thinking and that you used to think they haven't gone away just because you've surrendered your life to Jesus. Those habits that you used to perform before you believed in Jesus, they are still there. They haven't gone. Maybe those long ongoing patterns of shame and depression and guilt, maybe they still continue to entangle you every single day, every single month, every single year. And maybe you're watching this and you just feel completely weighed down and overwhelmed by those chains, even though you surrendered your life to Jesus. And maybe you're watching this and, and maybe you don't know Jesus, but you feel like that as well. You feel bound by all these situations and these circumstances that have come into your life. You know, the truth is we all long for freedom. Every single one of us long for freedom. You know, and if we are Christians, we long for this freedom as well. We long for real freedom. A freedom to know God in a greater way. A freedom to know uh, who we are and, and be all that God has created us to be and redeemed us to be. But maybe you're watching this this morning and you just don't know, how am I ever going to be free? Maybe that's a question that's been ringing in your mind over maybe a number of days, over a number of months, or maybe for many, many years. How can I be free? I'm sick of this. I'm sick of being bound by this problem, this situation. I want to know real freedom. Maybe that's the question that's been in your heart for a long, long time, but you just don't know how to get out of it. Maybe you've tried different things. Maybe you spoke to different people, but you don't know how to get out of it. You know, as I've been praying about what to share over these next couple of weeks, especially still considering st we're still in lockdown, the Lord laid this series on my heart and he laid that title on my heart, Real Freedom, Real Freedom, because I believe it is God's will for each and every one of us to know, to walk and to live in real freedom. And from the outset of this series, I just want to share with you something that God laid on my heart as I was praying over this series, as I was praying for you, as I was praying for us as a church, there was this phrase that God laid on my heart. And that, that is that real freedom is not physical, but spiritual. Real freedom is not physical, but it's spiritual. You know, real freedom has nothing to do with what's going on externally, but it has everything to do with, with what's going on internally. Real freedom happens inside, not just on the outside. It is, it's more about what's going on on the inside. And over the next few weeks, we're going to be doing a study of the book uh, of a book in the Bible. In fact, it's it's a letter in the Bible. And this letter, it talks about real freedom and how we can receive this real freedom. And it's got incredible answers. It looks at incredible subjects. And I know that and I believe that God will speak to you and bring freedom into your life. And over the next couple of weeks, we're going to be doing a study in the letter of the Galatians. We're going to be looking at the book of Galatians. And you know, the key verse for us in this series is found in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 13. And it says this, it says, For you have been called to live in freedom. For you have been called to live in freedom. I believe that the call of God to me today, the call of God to you today, to Gateway Church Cymru and to all who are watching online is you have been called to freedom. God has called you to a life of freedom that is found in him. And Jesus is the one who made this way possible for us to know real freedom, not freedom like the world gives with conditions. It is real freedom, true freedom, and it is only found 
in Jesus Christ. And I believe, as I said, it is God's will for every single person who is watching this, that we know real freedom, that we live and walk in real freedom. And that is the theme of Paul's letter to the Galatians. So this morning, I just want to give uh, a quick introduction to the, the letter of Galatians. And, and then over the next couple of weeks, we go, we're going to be diving into this letter together. You know, a lot of people find it hard to believe that something can actually be free. You know, if some, somebody offered you something and said it's free, have it. You know, it's hard sometimes for us to believe because there are often conditions attached to it. You know, you can have this if you do this for me. You know, there are often conditions like that. It's hard for people to believe that something is actually free, truly free. You know, many of us suspect that there are strings attached. Or as I said, we have to earn it back or pay it back. And you know, that's a feeling that, that the believers in the church of Galatia had when Paul was writing this letter to, to them many, many years ago, thousands of years ago. As I said, this, this letter of Galatians, it was written by the Apostle Paul. Many of you might know the Apostle Paul. He was once a, a persecutor of the Christians. He hated Christians. He went around killing Christians. But then he had this incredible encounter with the resurrected Jesus on the Damascus Road. And his life ch it changed and turned around. He surrendered his life to Jesus. And he went from being Paul, the murderer of Christians, to being Paul, the person who's planting churches, raising up Christian leaders, encouraging Christians everywhere. He's somebody who wrote uh, nearly all of the New Testament. It's incredible how God turned his life around. And now he's right into this church in Galatia. Now Galatia, it was, uh, Galatia, it was a place in the Roman province in the central part of Asia Minor. Or in modern day, it would be in Turkey. That's where Galatia was. And this is a province, a Roman province. And there were some churches that, that Paul was right into. And actually, these were, weren't just any churches. These were churches that Paul had established on one of his mission, missionary journeys. It was either his first or his second missionary journey that he had planted these churches and established these churches. And now he was right into them. Now, there's no uh, definite date on when this letter was written. Bible commentators uh, suggest and think that this letter was written between AD 49 and AD 56. But most commentators believe and agree that this letter was probably written just after Paul's second, second missionary journey. And you know, after Paul had left speaking to these churches and helping these churches and ministering to the people there, something terrible had happened. Straight away after Paul had left, False teachers had come into these churches and began to share a false gospel with them. And this message, this gospel went against everything that Paul had told them about Jesus. It went everything uh, against everything that, God, that Paul had told these churches. Now these false preachers, these false teachers, they came into the churches and they were promoting this belief that Christians, they had to obey the Jewish law and rituals in order to be saved and to be a true Christian. It wasn't enough, they were saying there, that you believe that Jesus died for you on the cross, took the punishment for your sins, and he's the one who saved you. He said, they were saying basically that, yes, you've got to believe in Jesus, but also now you've got to keep performing these religious laws and these religious rituals, and they, and only they alone, will make you right with God. I know there were some people in these churches, some Christians in these churches in Galatia who were finding that message that Paul had said about the gospel being free, about the grace of God, the gift of God. They were finding it difficult to accept. They were finding it difficult to believe that God's gift of salvation was truly free. And you know, the truth is this morning for each and every one of us. That if you try to get right with God by obeying certain rules, by following certain rituals and trying to be right in your own efforts, then you'll never get there. That is the truth this morning. No matter how good we are, no matter what we do, we will never be able to make ourselves right with God. Because the Bible tells us God is holy and we are sinners. The Bible says every single one of us has sinned. We all fall short of the glory of God. There is nothing that you and I could do to make ourselves right with God. And you know, if you want to live a life that's trying to make yourself right with God and follow certain rituals and go to church and, and, you know, do all these things just to make yourself right with God, then I want to let you know this morning that you'll never get there. You'll never make yourself right with God and you'll always be a slave. You'll be a slave to those rules. You'll be a slave to, to that way of thinking and you'll never be free no matter how good you are. 
You'll never know real freedom or experience real freedom. You know, works-based salvation is not good news. That message is not good news that you have to try harder and you have to work harder and you have to go to church and you have to do all these things to be right with God. It, it is not good news. That's why you see so many people leaving churches because people feel bound and they feel like it's just rule after rule and rule and they never get to experience the life and the freedom and the grace and the goodness of God. You know, the works-based salvation, it's crushing, it's burdensome, it's condemning, it's a horrible message. But you know, it's amazing to think that when we read this gospel, when we read this letter that Paul was writing to the Galatians, we see that Paul, he didn't mince his words after hearing that these false teachers had come in and began to teach this false message. He didn't mince his words. He didn't shy away from it. But actually, he begins to confront these lies that these, these people had been sharing with the churches in Galatia. He began to confront those lies. And you know, when Paul begins to write to the churches in Galatia, he writes out of a motive of love, with his fatherly affection. And he writes with, with faith and he writes with hope. And he's believing that, that as he begins to continue to share with them, even though this, message, this false message has come to them, as he sends this letter, he's hoping and believing that they won't listen to that message. But in fact, they'll hold on to the true gospel, the true message that it is only Jesus that saves and not our works or our good efforts. The message that Paul wants to get across in Galatians is that the true gospel message of salvation is found through faith in Jesus Christ. It is through grace and through faith in Jesus Christ that we are saved. You know, God didn't come to earth and, and become a human so that everybody on the planet would turn into a Jew and, and have to follow Jewish law and, and all these different things. But God actually came to this earth so that everybody, no matter who we are, Jew or Gentile, and Gentile is basically somebody who's not a Jew, uh, whether we're Jew or Gentile, he made a way possible that all could have a relationship with him. No matter who we are, no matter what we've done, he made that way possible. You know, the gospel and salvation is not about doing good works or doing certain things in a right way. Actually, the gospel is all about grace. The gospel is about freedom from having to try and earn God's approval. The gospel is living in true freedom, knowing that Jesus paid it all, that Jesus bore it all, that Jesus lived the perfect life which you and I uh, could never live so that we could be free, so that we could be free, forgiven and that we could have a relationship with him. Jesus paid it all. This message in Galatians is all about grace and the gospel is all about grace. God's unmerited, undeserved favour to you and to me. As I said, Jesus paid it all. And the, the gospel, the true gospel, is actually good news. It's liberating, knowing that there's nothing we could do to make ourselves right with God, but knowing that Jesus done it all. And it can be summed up in that one verse that's found, that one well-known verse that is found in the Gospel of John, which says in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. You know, when you live your life following Jesus, no amount of money, no amount of time or possessions or effort can ever take the place of the freedom that is only found in him. Following Jesus is a life of freedom. Now, I do want to say as well this morning, just, just so that we, you know, that because Jesus has paid it all for us, just because we know this freedom doesn't mean that we have this freedom just to live any way that we want. But he has given this freedom so that we might live to follow after him and to step into all that he has for us. The incredible plan and purpose that he has for every single one of us. It is true freedom, real freedom in following after God. You know, so as we come to a conclusion this morning, you know, this entire letter of Galatians, it is the, a clarification of good news, of the good news that Jesus saves us by his grace and our faith in him. That's where, how we are saved. It is through faith in Jesus, not by Jewish regulations, not by man-made rules or traditions. It is by Jesus alone. That is how we are saved. That is how we live this Christian life. As I've said before, Christianity isn't a religion. It is a relationship with the living God. And Paul, the Apostle Paul, he wanted us to understand that Jesus and only in Jesus alone can we experience real freedom. Can we know real freedom, not bondage, but real freedom. And this freedom enables us to have a relationship with God, to be friends with God. So I'm looking forward over these next couple of weeks 
to go through this series together. Amen. Well, as we come to towards the end of our service together this morning, we're going to just take communion together. This is something we do every single week at Gateway Church Cymru. And this is the time where we remember and celebrate and give thanks to Jesus for all that he has done for us, for saving us. And I just want to read to you what it says in Ephesians chapter 2. And this is the Apostle Paul writing again. And he says this in verse 8. God saved you by his grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done, so none of us can boast about it. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. You know, we have been saved through the grace of God. It is a gift from God. And you know, we are saved because we've placed our faith and trust in Jesus. It is all because of what Jesus has done that we are made right with him. And this morning, we want to give thanks to him for his sacrifice upon the cross for you and me. You know, his body was broken. His blood was shed so that you and I could be forgiven, so that we could have a relationship with God and that we could have the gift of eternal life. And we're going to celebrate that together right now. So I want to encourage you, wherever you're watching this from. Go and grab your piece of bread or your cracker or whatever it might be, a wrap or whatever it is. And let's take the bread together. And this is a symbol of Jesus's body that was broken on the cross for you and for me. His body which bore the wrath of God, which bore our sin so that we could be made new and made whole. Let's thank him for his body that was broken this morning. Amen. Jesus, we just want to simply say thank you this morning. Lord, we know our words are often not enough, but Lord, for all that you have done, we are so thankful, Lord. Lord, it is only because of you that we are saved. Lord, I thank you for your body that was broken for me on the cross, your body which was broken for us on the cross so that we could be made new in and through you. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your sacrifice, Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to take the cup together right now, and I want to encourage you, go and grab your juice together and this is a symbol of Jesus's blood that was shed for you and for me on the cross his blood which washes us clean whiter than snow let's thank him for his precious blood so let's take this together and we'll give him thanks amen Lord again we just want to say thank you thank you for your blood which was shed for us on the cross Lord, your blood which cleanses us of all sin, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your precious blood. Lord, we thank you for your incredible sacrifice on that cross. We thank you that because you died, Lord, Lord, we could be made whole, we could be made new. We thank you that you rose again three days later, that you're alive forevermore. We thank you for this relationship that we have with you today. And we thank you that you are coming again very, very soon. Lord, we look forward to that day. Jesus, we thank you for this incredible gift of salvation which you have given to us. Even though we never deserved it, you give it to us because of your love, your grace and your mercy. Lord, we just want to say thank you today and we give you praise. Amen. Amen. Well, it's been so great to join together this morning for Church Online. I pray you've been encouraged today as we began our new series together. And if you would like to find out more about what it means to follow Jesus and have a relationship with Jesus, then please like this comment that's about to pop up in the comment section. We'd love to help you and give you information about how you can begin a relationship with Jesus. It is the best decision that you will ever make. But I want to encourage you, join us again tonight at 5pm for our brand new 5pm Church Online service. Over the next couple of weeks, our former senior pastor, Pastor Robert Baldwin, he's going to be starting a sermon series with us. And I know this series will bring incredible encouragement to you. So please join us again tonight at 5 p.m. for Church Online. So great that we've been able to meet together this morning. I want to encourage you, please stay connected with us as a church in the days and weeks to come. You can do this through our social media platforms and through our website as well, gatewaychurchcumry.co.uk. We'd love to connect with you in the days and the weeks to come. But please know that we are praying for you as a church. We are here for you and we'd love for you to get in touch with us if there is anything that we can help you with. I pray that you know God's blessing today and I look forward to seeing you later. God bless.